go. Makovsky, 30. Sampo, 29. Everything else is virtually identical. And with the introductions, the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas for UFC 170. And now, this fight is three rounds in the UFC flyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a wrestler holding a professional record, 11 wins, two losses. He stands five feet four inches tall, weighing in at 126 pounds. Fighting out of St. Charles, Missouri, Josh the Gremlin Sapo. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record, 17 wins, four losses. He stands five feet four inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds, fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Zach Fonsize Mikulski. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Chris Coyote. Chris Tyone, our referee. Ready, bud? Ready? Here we go, guys. We get Fight. set in the flyweight division. And here we go. Sampo in the white trunks. Black trunks for Mikovsky. Sampo opening up with that switch kick. Likes that switch kick to the head as well. He's thrown two low ones. Makovsky tries to measure the distance with that left hand. Three straight victories for Zach Makovsky, including, as was talked about in the feature, a win over Scott Jorgensen in his UFC debut. Because these men are standing orthodox to southpaw, meaning that Makovsky standing with his right hand forward and Sampo with his left, it opens up the power kick to the body and to the head for both fighters. Up and down, up and down, up and low. Come on, that work. Slide. Cover that. It's a position that we've talked about. The takedown for Mikovsky. Zach Mikovsky, Division One wrestler at Drexel, and that single leg he just utilized, that's his go to move. People talked about that throughout his collegiate career. Josh Sampo, Keep your head Johnny high. Bones there Jones, go. the Keep champion, fired up to watch his show tonight. Sampo holding him down tight. here in mission control, using his left leg to pin down the posture of Makovsky. And it's all here, all about the right leg. It's all about making sure that Makovsky doesn't head. press Let down on that ball. right leg and step over it, which is what he's trying to do. If he does that and winds up turning, yeah, he had to let it go. Sampo had to let it go. Now to full guard here. Looking to avoid the ground and pound. Puts feet on the hips. Let's go of the full guard. Mikoski's trying to get close to him. In the half guard again. Six career victories by submission, Joe. 17 in all for Zach Mikoski. And Sampo trying to outmaneuver Makovsky on the ground. Makovsky showing real good top control. <laughs> trying to get wrist control is Sampo on the bottom. Trying to hold on to the hand of Makovsky, but he doesn't have a good grip on it. Makovsky wants to be real careful of that up kick. Here's the attempt. Makovsky holding on, drives under it. Nicely going for an omoplata. Went for a shoulder lock here. Doesn't have the, he needs his left arm on the other side of him. He needs to get the left arm of Makovsky towards his waist in order for that to be effective. Let it go. But I like the way he rolled on that, Mike. Yep. That's offensively minded in, in a very risky maneuver. And Zach as well knew that he needed to get himself in a different position quickly. Well, he certainly did. He was, he was trapped there in a bit of a tricky spot, but he also knew that his, his hand wasn't wrapped in the in the bad position. His right. hand was in a better defensive position than it would have been if it was near his waist. Both these men earned their first UFC victories within two weeks of each other. Sampo right here 
Oh, Las Vegas. There was a good upkick by Sampo right there. Mikovsky in Sacramento. And he looks for that upkick, Mike. It's a dangerous upkick. Very good with it. Back up to his feet. And that was the threat of the upkick that gave him the space to stand up. So one takedown for Mikovsky thus far, and it was the single leg. After going 14 and 4 at 135, Mikovsky made the move to 125, where he'd like to make a run at Dimitris Mighty Mouse Johnson. He's coming off a great title defense, finishing Joseph Benavides. Couple good shots landed in there by Sampo, and a nice trip attempt by Mikovsky. Up and down, up and down, hold it, hold it, hold it. Looking for more movement. Sampo does a lot of risky things on his feet. Lead uppercut, he tried earlier. And again, watch that switch kick. Really likes that switch kick off the left leg. If they were both orthodox, oh, nice knee to the body by Mikovsky. That was a hard knee to the body. If they were both orthodox, Sampo would probably try that to the head. Final seconds of the round, Joe. Only on Fox, 23-year-old Dylan is car owner Richard Childress's grandson. He's driving the famous number three car at Daytona for the first time since Dale Earnhardt died there in 2001. What a moment. That was a big head kick by Mikowski, partially blocked by Sampo. And Sampo's corner, in no unclear terms, said, you lost that first round. You have two rounds to try to win this fight. And you need to win both of them. In their estimation. And a little bit more aggressive to start here for Sampo, Joe. Yeah, well, he's got to be careful, that high kick. That high kick that Mikovsky landed on his guard. Very strong. Looking for the single. Sampo able to turn the corner. That is his go-to move. Well, clearly we see a wrestling advantage from Mikovsky. Well, Mikovsky, a Division I wrestler at Trexel. Sampo, NAIA, three-time All-American wrestler at Lindenwood. And then there's the MMA aspect of it, too, which changes everything, Joe. And the striking of Mikowski, which opens up that wrestling. There's a nice counter there. Sampo's corner saying that you're better than that, and he's a very talented fighter. Mikowski is something special, and I think that's what we're seeing here. I don't think it's that Sampo's better than what he's showing. He's excellent. Mikowski's just very good, too. Right, right. It's like Rashad Evans. Rashad Evans was very good at Michigan State, but he wasn't the same level of a Gray Maynard. He wasn't an All-American, but as an MMA wrestler, man, is he dynamic. Big takedown there by Mikowski again. And he's kind of able to take down Sampo most of the times he's attempted it. Squeeze your legs together. Trying to advance his position. Good control here by Mikovsky. He's got to be careful that head, though. Right now, the guillotine's not, he doesn't have full control. He doesn't have his hands clasped together, and they're in half guard. Nice job pulling out of that. Turning two, he wants to keep him flattened out, though. He doesn't want Sampo spinning behind him. Good control on the top. Yes. As long as that left leg is trapped in there, he's good. And now he's going to look out for that upkick. Mikovsky was the captain of the Drexel wrestling team his senior year. Graduated on the top 20 all-time Drexel win list. Sampo throws that, that upkick, especially when Mikovsky tries to hide the, the chin by going sideways. Sampo's very accurate with a good left hand by Mikovsky. To set up control. Riding the neck here, keeping his weight on the upper back and neck. He might go for a front choke here. He's setting himself in a position to trap the neck. And Sampo's free. Mikovsky made an interesting comment when he was asked about his opponent. He said he's probably the most similar opponent to myself that I have faced. So far, Mikovsky's 
got the edge in this matchup against Josh Sampo. This is a really high paced fight, the way these guys move so fast in the transitions between striking and grappling, especially for Makovsky. Ooh, nice, nice up body shot. shot, yep. And, and the fastest of them all is the champion of this division oh. when you talk about transitions. And the most perfect. Yes. Demetrius Johnson is, in my opinion, the most sound, technically sound MMA fighter we've ever seen. He just does everything right. And the credit to him, and there's that head kick. And credit to Matt Hume, his coach, who's just, just got such a deep knowledge of martial arts. The Wizard, good job avoiding those two strikes by McCoskey. Good judge of distance there. And Samples, he's got to get th something going here. Final 30 plus seconds here of round two. In order to be able to win, Sampo has got to put himself in a position where he possibly could lose. Because going technique for technique the way he's doing here, he's coming out of the short end of the stick. Kenny gets a hold of that leg and puts him on his back. Yeah, he's going to have to take some chances. He's looking for the Kimori here, but hidden very well by Makovsky. Another good round for Zach Makovsky. Sampo trying to pull it out, trying to wrap it up. Look at this. 170 prelims on Fox Sports 1 are sponsored by Here we go, guys. Last round. Here, Here we go. Here we go. So there was a good attempt at the end of the round where Sampo was trying to pull out a Kimura and perhaps transition to an arm bar or some other arm attack. But his corner was, again, very clear. That's two rounds down. You got to pull it out. You got to finish him in this round. Kofsky's just been sound with his striking, with his takedowns, in the ground game, and in his ability to avoid taking damage. And his, yeah, his ability to move, like you saw in that exchange right there. Sampo came at him, good hand techniques, good kicks. McCoskey nowhere to be found. McCoskey, plus 10 significant strikes landed thus far in the fight. And you know, we're not selling Sampo short. He's a very, very good fighter. Absolutely. Excellent technique. Just Makovsky so far has been a little better. And now Makovsky's down. Yeah, they met and they pushed and pushed him down. Yeah, let's see if Sampo. Four takedowns for Makovsky, top position pretty much for the first time here for Sampo, Joe. Yeah, let's see if Sampo can capitalize on this. Let's see what his top game looks like and whether or not he can control Makovsky. Makovsky, who's very strong, is looking to get an underhook on the same side. He's got half guard. He may look to stand up from that. And good job by Sampo pulling that leg back under him. Excellent control so far by Sampo. Can he step over that left leg and mount? Back to half guard. So far, good control. The more you see Makovsky work that underhook and try to get those feet under him, the, the deeper that underhook gets, the more he can get his feet under him, the more likely he's going to be to stand up. Uh, one of our big fans, DeMarco Murray, of course, from Las Vegas, Bishop Gorman High School, starting in the NFL, fired up to watch Ronda Rousey, Sarah McMahon in UFC 170 later tonight. Keep tweeting. Follow the conversation at hashtag 170. Makovsky's doing a good job of constantly elevating the hips of Sampo, looking for that opening to try to get up. And Sampo doing a good job of keeping Makovsky down. Real strong wrestlers are very hard to hold down, and Sampo lost it. Midway point of the third and final round. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my argument against stand-ups. Right there. Two high-level wrestlers. A guy like Sampo can't keep a guy like Makovsky down if Makovsky does all the right things. And that's how it should be. If a guy can keep you down, he should keep you down. I don't like stand-ups, and that's one of the reasons why, because they don't learn the skills that Makovsky just exhibited. Joe, how many times did we say in George St. Pierre fights, it's not George's fault that the guy on the bottom can't get back up. Exactly. And there was a nice left hand by Makovsky. 
when you're that good at controlling, that's what you do. Exactly. And and there's fighters that you can't do that to. Like, think about a guy like Jose Aldo. Have you ever seen anybody do that to him? Nope. No, I mean, in the last rounds, maybe he's been on his back, but only when guys are working. Guys like Hannah Burrell, you can't hold him down. And that's the that's the technique that we're all striving for. See here in the octagon. Good takedown again by Mikowski. Now let's see the butterfly guard of Sampo. The difference between the way Mikowski handles the ground and Sampo is Sampo is being more submission oriented, looking for submissions, not trying to elevate the weight the same way that Mikowski was. Mikowski was very strong with the underhooks, very strong with the butterfly guard, and constantly moving the weight of Sampo. Whereas Sampo looks to me like he's trying to clear some openings for potential submissions, and that's probably a good thing because his only chance to win this fight at this point in time is a knockout or a submission. He's on his back. He's got to work for something. Yeah, and the time is working against him with 30 seconds on the clock in what has been a very dominant performance for Zach Bukowski. Yeah, Bukowski has just sort of had the edge yeah. in every single scenario in this he, fight. Yeah, he spent well over a round in top position. Stay busy, guys. So fun size looking to go to 2-0 and oh inside the octagon. They go the distance. An excellent fight. Very, very highly skilled fight. And I think a good clean win for McCoskey. And a learning experience for Sampo, who's a very talented fighter. A good battle at 125. The official decision is coming up next, right here on Fox Sports 1. Beautiful night here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as we get set for Ronda Rousey, Sarah McMahon, later on pay-per-view. Right now, the prelims on Fox Sports 1. Flyweight fight goes the distance. With the decision, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judges score the contest 30-27, 30-27, 29-28 for the winner. By unanimous decision, Zach Fonsai Mikowski. Zach Mikowski moves to 2-0 oh in his young UFC career. And a very good performance tonight. Our move of the fight brought to you by Metro PCS, where nationwide 4G LTE is $40, period. And there you see the striking of Mikowski, which was one of the things that we saw in his fight with Jorgensen that we were so impressed with. He's just very skilled and very well-rounded in all areas of mixed martial arts. And making his UFC debut against Jorgensen and now a nice victory over Sampo, we see great skill and great potential in this young man. A real excellent contender in the flyweight division. And don't forget, fans,